Um, are, still, are, are still actually um, being used now. Some people actually still live in some of these uh, platforms. I saw something on this week. But I got a feeling we've covered that before somewhere. Aren't you talking about the um, housing stock in Barry? Because that's still being used from the Roman period. <laughs> well, um, the, 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 the 2000 year, year old um, Roman buildings are in better condition than the ones in Barry, believe it or not. Uh, I, hang on, hang on, hang on, Bill. Yeah. You're you're a bit of a um, hypocrite, really, because you went to Barry the other day, didn't you? I did. I did, Carl. Yeah, <laughs> I enjoyed it. Uh, now, now, Bill, that that's just <laughs> unacceptable. No, um, no. Uh, Barry's a nice place, biggest town in in, in Wales. Well, uh, but, well, so so we say most of it was stolen. Was it now? Uh, yeah, we 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 stolen most of it from places like My Steg. Right, so um, actually, I've got some nice articles of the week. I want to do something. I want to do something out of the book. I've got um, what decimation means. Okay, so we'll look at that from the from the book Rome at War, and I've got some slides that we're looking at the Roman villa at um, Landsberg Major. One or two that you may not have seen before, um, and a, an unusual coin that I've got in front of me that. Um, some of you may have seen, some some of you may not have seen, and um, a rather interesting coin with an interesting story, and there it is. See that mm. little that little coin there. So hang on, let's put the head on there as well. It's like a twenty p piece, doesn't it? It it does. Look at that there. Yeah, yeah. Is that Hadrian? And yeah. I, actually, strangely enough, it's got a link with Hadrian, which is rather interesting. So um. So I, I want to do some articles of the week. So that's that's what we're going to do. Uh, that's where we're going to go first. And we've got this this article here um, from Italy. Uh, and we've got this one. Emperor's head is hit at auction. Now, that, that's rather interesting because you've got the head of what we believe uh, was. Hang on. If we uh, chuck this head in here a minute. Hang on. Um, this head behind me is the head that was believed to have been the head of Claudius. Right. Uh, but we now think that this one, uh, the famous head, is actually the head of um, Nero. Uh, but that's something else. That's a bit of, that's a bit of new, new news. Um, and we've got another article here. Graveyard of the executed Roman army farm slaves. Now, this is rather interesting. Right. So um, and I know some of you know, know about another find that's been found uh, of, of, of um reported this week so uh we'll, 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 that that'll go on from here so graveyard of the executed roman army farm slaves and that um is is a piece that 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 we've got from this week so um i'm thinking maybe um we, we've got problems with the background today because um i'm missing a poll um a roman burial site in cambridgeshire so uh, i tell you what hang, hang on a minute bear with me just one second um, if we can have a bit more Roman there. Oh, let, let's get this head. Hang on a minute. Let's, uh, da -da -da. hang on a minute. Oh, that's a daisy. We put that there. Hang on a minute. Oh. Um, I'm going to try if I can get this one up again. Right. Um, da -da -da. Bear with me. Hang on. I want to see if we can get this head of this head behind us. So that that that'll be pretty good, I think. Uh, there we go. Uh, if we do that there, and we go like that, and we go like that, and we go like that. Oh, that's better. That's absolutely better, isn't it? Oh, that's a much better head. There he is. Ugly looking brute. But anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put me on full do-da so that we've got speaker's view. Excellent. Don't I look good all, all in one? So, a Roman burial site in Cambridgeshire where a third of graves are of beheaded people may have served a state-run grain farm where slaves or forced labourers suffered extreme justice, archaeologists say. Out of 52 burials uncovered at Nob End's farm, Summerham, yep, yeah, no, not a knob ends. It's Nobs Farm, but it sounds better. Nob Nobs Farm in Summer Summerham. Seventeen were decapitated and thirteen were buried face down. In ten cases where the bodies were decapitated, their heads 
were placed by their feet, possibly to present, prevent them from rising from the, from the grave. In their report, the archaeologists of Cambridge Archaeological Unit rule out various ritual interpretations for decapitation based on clear evidence for beheading as the cause of death in several cases. A blow mark suggests those victims were kneeling when killed. They conclude that the eight women and nine men were probably all executed. Going on dating of pottery grave goods, such as beakers and flagons discovered with the burials, they believe they died during the 300s, when the number of crimes punishable by death was higher than earlier in the Roman occupation. The new analysis of bones indicates that most were of adults who died aged 20 to 50. DNA, an isotope analysis, that's the one that you look at the teeth, uh, suggests most of the burials are of unrelated individuals, several of whom may have been from uh, overseas, including... Now, this is quite interesting. The Alps, the Mediterranean, and Ireland. Uh, let's read that again. Some of these individuals may have been from Ireland. Now, that's rather interesting because um, we're, we're told, aren't we, that the Romans had nothing to do with Ireland. Um, this and local archaeological finds indicates the presence of state-run farms suggests they were not local in living um, in ordinary communities, but were brought together to supply the Roman army with grain. This might have occurred through state or army service trade or some form of slavery or independent service, the archaeologist in the journal Britannia. Across Roman Britain, 3 to 6% of all burials are of decapitated people, suggesting that, um, that execution was commonplace. However, the rate of 33% on the, the, the excavations at Nobbs Farm is exceptionally high. The archaeologists note that if the decapitation remains were victims of judicial execution, their bodies would have been handed over to their families for burial, um, explaining why they were buried with grave goods. The reason for the prone uh, reason for the, um, the the burials remains mysterious. While six of the thirteen individuals buried prone were also decapitated, others were not. They said the association with apparent graves of beheaded criminals suggests they that those individuals buried prone, face down, with heads intact, may also have been criminals, and their families may have been expressing shame or fear. Now, that's really rather interesting, that article. And the reason why I did that to Phil is because there's something else that's been hitting the news this week. And I know one of you, I know some of you may have actually seen this. Um, so I just need to just get this one up on, on the screen. Uh, it's associated with um, a Roman, um, in the headlines, Roman slave burial um, that was apparently found um, in the past few days. Right. So here we go. Now, I'm sure that some of you will have seen this article. There we go. I'm going to show this to you on the screen. Um, and there we go. And screen share on three. Hang on. No, that's the wrong one. Three, two, and one. Right. Have any of you actually seen this this week, Bill? No, I haven't, Bill. What about you, Richard? Uh, no, I haven't seen it, Carl. Well, actually, that, that surprises me. I'm not going to ask anybody else because probably the answer is going to be all no. But um, this this is this is an interesting one. And me and Jessica completely agree on the meaning of this. And it's not what you think. Shackled skeleton may be direct evidence of slavery in Roman Britain. Now, that is very, very topical. And I'm sure we will all agree. Iron fetters around the skeleton's ankles was secured in the centre with a padlock. So far, so good. Yeah. The great um, Casterton Roman burial shackles were found locked around the skeleton's ankles. So what we've got, we've got these were actually found around the ankles of the buried individual. So that that's, that's two bits of information. A man who died in Roman Britain more than 1,500 years ago was buried wearing padlocked iron shackles securing his ankles and 
his burial is perhaps the best candidate for the remains of an enslaved person in England when the land was under Roman control, scientists reported in a new study. Now, stop, stop, stop. Uh, we've got two articles here. We've got one, one, the one that we've just read out, okay, which was in the Times. And the one that we've just read out, which was in the Times, is was actually from um, uh, about, uh, this was the 31st, so um, nine days ago. So in other words, there's this big thing at this minute about slavery, right? Now, um, and, and, and execution and, and all these different things. So it is no coincidence, right? Because it seems to be fashionable, fashionable to be talking about slavery at this minute. Um, it goes on to say construction workers discovered the headless skeleton. He hasn't got a head as well. Right. In 2015 in Great Casterton, archaeologists who recently analysed the remains suspect that someone buried the man's corpse in shackles to demean him and perhaps even to indicate that the man was enslaved. Why are we talking about this now? What, why, why, are we, why are we talking about this now? Why wasn't this made public ages ago? This is like from 2015. This is new news. This is in the past two days. Why? While written records show that slavery was practiced throughout uh, the Roman Empire, archaeologists have only rarely found a, a direct evidence of enslavement. Well, bloody hell. In this article, we've got, what is it? Um, uh, probably 17 um, that, that were said... So in other words, overnight, more people have been, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, and this is the first burial from Roman era Britain to include a skeleton still wearing iron ankle restraints. While it's, it's impossible to tell if the man wore these shackles in life, however, buried him in fetters, did so to declare their dominance over the deceased, the study authors wrote. Now, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? I completely disagree with this. And why? Um, what is wrong with this, Bill? Can you tell me? I'm just picking on you, Bill. Have you, what, what is wrong with this article? <sighs> What's wrong with it? What, what smells a bit odd? <sighs> what, what, why would you go to the expense of getting rid of a shackle, which has got a value, right, in the grave? You wouldn't do that. You tied the rope on him if you wanted to, to do it, but you wouldn't use an iron shackle, which has got value. Right. Actually, you, you've hit exactly what we said. Right. When 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 Jessica saw this and when I saw this, I said this and she said that and we both agreed on the same thing. So you actually agree with what that's three of us, right? Three of us so far. And I've only just shown you this now. Um, now, the one thing that we do know, the reason why we don't find evidence of slavery in Roman Britain, other than what this article is saying, which I also don't really agree with, this this one that we've just read out, right, uh, is because slaves in Roman Britain were seen to be people that um, that saw themselves as that sort of class in society. Um, each, you know, anyone of any worth would have had a slave with them, and that slave would have um, lived at the bottom of their bed, right. So, in other words, a slave would have lived in the room with you, um, and and we don't find any evidence of shackles because it's very unlikely that they would have had shackles on in the first place because slavery was commonplace um, and and the definition of slavery is 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 up for debate so these these weren't you know for example they may have been branded you know we know this is a slave so why do we need to put shackles on them right so they, they would have been branded um and so that that's one point as well and bill's hit it on 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 the nail uh you're not gonna the shackles were probably more valuable than than the slave so why would you bury the sh shackles with a supposed slave so that that bill's bill's honed in on exactly what we both thought that uh, it's it's um it is talking about the concept of value the shackles were more valuable than the than 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 the person Right. So if we if we if we look more logical at this, you, you've got to really start um, one asking why you don't find bodies in Britain buried with shackles, because the shackles were very valuable. Um, and also, um, Bill can see like me, there's actually a, there's actually what's described uh, as a padlock on them as well. The padlock would have been quite an intricate device at the time. 
So that would have been quite valuable as well. So why the person was wearing manacles, I believe is nothing to do with slavery. Um, so so that, that's, that's another point. Um, if they if they discarded this person with manacles, it was for another reason. This is what I'm saying. Um, and the other thing as well is if we if we go to this article that I've just read out that discusses all these different burials found decapitated and face down, well, decapitation in Roman society was commonplace. We're finding a lot of decapitated individuals and finding people who are decapitated with their heads, um, either at their feet um, or, um, or, placed, um, or placed in other parts of the body is, is not uncommon. Um, and to say that these people are, are actually criminals and to actually say that this person was a slave really needs somebody to look and say, if this is the only evidence that we've actually ever found, and there were thousands of slaves, this is nothing to do with slavery. So th this is what I feel, right? So, okay, we, we've done that now. So what I'd like to do is, this is, this, is a, this is a rather interesting article, this other interesting, this other article about Rome. So if we, if we want to ditch this off, off in the background, this is another rather interesting one. Um, hundreds of ancient Romans fleeing the eruption of Vesuvius in AD um, 79, um, let, let's put a bit of a date on there on the uh, up to approximately 12 o'clock between 12 and one o'clock. No joke there on the 24th of August in AD 79 um, were minutes from being rescued on a boat sent by the historian Pliny the Elder when they perished. An expert has claimed minutes away from being alive or dead. And the other thing as well is that um, the other thing as well is if. If, if we wouldn't have known if they escaped because they wouldn't have been there. So they were moments away. This is what this article is saying. Now, this is this is rather this is this is very interesting. The skeleton of the skeletons, skeletons of 300 inhabitants of Heraclanium were discovered in the 1980s, huddled with their jewelry on the town's beach, killed by a tide of boiling volcanic material. Now, this is interesting. This, these discoveries were found in 1980, and now we're only starting to realise what this is about. Historians have suggested that they were close to being picked up by a rescue mission ordered by Pliny, the elder, the historian, who was commander of the local naval fleet. Francesco Serrano, the director of the archaeological site at Heraclanium, says he may now have proof the ornate weapons and the rucksack found with one of the skeletons, known as number 26, suggest he was part of the doomed mission sent by Pliny, which is why the locals look like they were lining up calmly to board his boat. So in other words, we, we've got a group of people who were, who were just thinking, right, it's fine, we got, we got another hour, and, and they just perish. Heraclanium was buried under 20 metres of volcanic material that hardened into rock allowing the preservation of wood, carbonized, um, unlike at its neighbor Pompeii. When the eruption was spotted by Pliny from Messinum, which is on the other side of the bay, past Naples, across the Bay of Naples, he ordered the galleys to be put to sea. His nephew, Pliny the Younger, wrote, Pliny the Elder boarded one vessel, braving, scalding rock, crashing on the decks and telling his captain Fortune favours the brave before he died, possibly of a heart attack after landing at the town of Stabe. Um, Stabe, Stabe. That's, that's, the, that's the harbour town. Um, on the beach of Heraclanium, which is now 500 metres inland, the remains of a nine metre rowing boat thought to have, 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 have been a, a, a military vessel indicates that it belonged to one of Pliny's ships. So one of Pliny's ships actually made it there. Um, near to the boat lay skeleton number 26, a healthy man aged between 40 and 45, your age, Richard, um, who was thrown face down into the sand by the uh, force of the eruption. Thought, 
thought to be a regular soldier because of the sword and dagger, Serrano said that the latest research showed that he was probably from the elite Praetorian Guard. Tash show his sword sheath and belt were silver engraved with gold, highly unusual for a regular soldier, while the oval shapes on his belt buckle represented the oval shields used by the Praetorian Guard at the time. The coins he carried, 12 silver denarii, and um, that, guys, is a silver denarii, uh, were equal to the month's salary paid to the guards. So 12 silver denarii and two um, golden denarii. So in other words, Solidus, that's actually, um, th that's actually, I would say, more than, more than a month's wages, actually, because a Roman soldier usually got paid a silver denarii a day. So, um, well, well, they were Praetorian, so, you know, they were the creme de la creme. There were no guard bases on the mainland there, but there was one on Capri, suggesting he had sailed from there on Pliny's orders. The one with the rucksack again um, also carried tools used by expert naval carpenters. The guard would have had people with these skills. The British archaeologist Sophie Hay said that until now, no proof had been found that rescuers made it to Heraclanium. If this research shows they did, then it makes a lovely connection between Pliny the Younger's famous letter and the archaeological remains. Isn't that really, isn't that really cute? Um, and what we're going to do, I want to do this. I, 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 we're doing something completely different this week in, in a way that we, we're doing Roman, but we're doing some articles. And, 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 and this is the last of um, this section. Um, and I will be doing um, it will be Varus next week. And then we'll be doing actually I'm, I've got a, I'm thinking, would you prefer for me to do Varus next week or, or the Spartacus revolt? And then we're going to be followed by Vertin Getrix and Julius Caesar um, the week after that. Anyway, a horde of ancient Roman treasures found buried in a field in Yorkshire, including a fantastically preserved bronze bust of Emperor Marcus Aurelius. Got to show it to you there. Doesn't he look good? Oh, yes. Um, mm. Bill, he looks a bit like you, doesn't he? Look at that. It's absolutely perfect. Yeah, he's a good looking guy, isn't he? He does look like Marcus Aurelius <laughs> with all the busts that we've got of Marcus Aurelius. And this... Wide is eyed. the article. What's that? Wide-eyed. Yes, exactly. I'm legless, in that case. Well, legless, because he drunk a lot, thank you very much. He, well, probably. <laughs> um, now, fantastically preserved. You, um, bronze bust of uh, Emperor Marcus Aurelius um, smashed its estimate and sold for 1,008 uh, 185,000 at an auction. So 185,000 at an auction, this bust was sold and it comes from a field in Yorkshire. And, and have you ever heard of this before? <laughs> no. I've never heard of this one. I've never seen this bust before. The two, the, this one behind me is very famous. It's the one we did in school. The, the one that was apparently the, 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 the bust that was found um, in the River Medway. And apparently it had been dumped there after the Boudican revolt um, and it had been taken from, it said, the temper of Claudius at Colchester and then dumped in the river Medway and then um, and that was it. But we now actually believe it's the head of Nero. Actually, um, it, 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 we think it's probably the head of Nero because Nero had a um, w w look, was a lot younger than, than Claudius when he actually became emperor. And that would actually make sense because Nero would have only been on the throne a few years when the Boudicca revolt occurred. He'd only been on the throne for about six years. And why not this being the head of Nero? But Nero was a bit of a strange person. Um, so the, the 2000 year old artifacts, which were discovered by metal detectorists in Rydale last May. So I, I knew nothing about this. I've never heard about this one before. This was a year ago, and you've got this wonderful bust. There we go. It's amazing. I've never heard of this one. Brilliant, this. Attracted worldwide interest when they um, went under the auction hammer. The collection, known as the Rydale Ritual Bronzes, were expected to fetch uh, up to £90,000. But it's, but this, this but you know, um, the, this wonderful bust of Marcus Aurelius sold for 185000 as well as the six-inch bust, 
Oh God, I thought this was, I, I actually thought this was life size actually. It's six, six, six inch bust is quite a little bust actually. Like a table bust, isn't it? As well as the, the six inch bust, which would have been mounted as the head of a priest's scepter. Really? Well, you're going around with this massive freaking, no, I, I, I'm more, let's arrange this on a desk, it sounds better. The hoard contained an equestrian, equestrian statue of the god Mars, I'd like to have seen that, a horse head knife handle and a large bronze uh, pendulum. This hoard of artifacts was probably buried as a religious offering. Why is it when we when we find a load of things in a field, it's obviously religious. They had nothing other than to be religious, which marked the closure of a rural shrine or the death of a priest. The artifacts would have formed a, um, a, a suite of ritual implements to be utilized when performing religious ceremonies and for predicting the future. Marcus Aurelius became emperor uh, uh, in March AD 161 and his 19 year reign was one of relative peace and prosperity for Rome. However, as we all know, Galen's, um, the uh, wonderful physician, described in AD 165, troops refer returning from Mesopotamia brought with them a virus which swept across the empire, the Antonine Plague. Now, this is rather interesting because we look at another plague tomorrow. And with what we're looking at tomorrow is, is basically, you know, another piece of evidence of how we've got these different plagues in the past and how we dealt with them. Now believed to be an outbreak of smallpox. This ancient pandemic devastated, and, and some other people do believe it was like a proper Eurestis pestis plague, but it definitely killed millions of people, killing 10% of the Roman population. Um, so when we talk about the population of the Roman Empire, it's really difficult to estimate that. Uh, um, and you know, population of Rome was about a million people. And you want to look at the estimation of the people in the Roman Empire, that's uh, 250 million people, maybe in about 165 AD. You can work out the maths, 10%. That's um, 25 million people died in that outbreak. I, I would probably, I'd probably go with a mixture of Paul smallpox and your rest is pestis and a few other things. Um, an accomplished scholar, author and philosopher, Marcus Aurelius faced the challenge of the pandemic with his own stoic attitude. In his book, Meditations, he wrote, how unlucky I am that this should happen to me, but not at all. Perhaps I should say how lucky I am that I am not broken by what has happened. Ooh. That's what he wrote. In other words, he survived and you guys didn't, love. He didn't give a toss. Oh, that's terrible to say. Marcus Aurelius was a fine leader of the Roman Empire. How dare you? It didn't sound like it then. No, it didn't sound like it then. Yeah, it didn't. Let, let, let's just do that last bit again. But not at all. Perhaps I should say how lucky I am that I am not broken by what has happened. <coughs> Quite shocking, that, isn't it? It really is. I don't think we should have shown. Uh, Marcus Aurelius is my hero. <laughs> uh, because I, I always look at the film. Oh, Christopher Plummer, he, he, he died at 91. I think he died in March, didn't he? And if did, no, no, no one knew that. He was 91 years old. Christopher Plummer played the figure of, of Commodus in, in my all-time favourite film about the Romans, The Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire. Not even Gladiator, Carl. What's that? Gladiator is my favourite uh, film about the, the Roman Empire. Uh, yeah. That's that's it's gonna it's come up. That, that's gonna come a close second because you got Joachim Phoenix's role in that. He, he, uh, I thought his role as Commodus yes, was absolutely you, astounding. Yes. Make a comment. Uh, the rise and fall of the um, Roman Empire was pure Hollywood in his presentation. Everything was sparkling. The armor was sparkling. Not a bit of dirt in sight. Didn't Most you dirt. love it? Anywhere. From from Gladiator. <laughs> but, okay then, Bill. Take away the Gladiator film uh, with Russell Crowe. W would it be mount up there in one of your favourite films? Come on. It would, because I thought um, the the ambience of it all, the Gladiator score and all that. Surely uh, that must have approached reality to quite a close degree. I would have thought. Yeah, yeah. Do you agree? Uh, 
Well, I, actually, to actually, to be honest with you, um, actually, to be honest with you, I, I, I um, because I do like Christopher Plummer and his acting. I'm a big fan yeah. of Christopher, Christopher Plummer. Films. Uh, in everything that he did. Um, I, I'm probably saying that in tribute to him, but Gladiator is definitely up there in, in, in one of my all time favorite films. Um, and the only, the only criticism that I would have in that film is it didn't go far enough at the end in explaining what happened to um, Commodus. Um, it didn't really explain. No, um, no. But then again, the ending of the film was quite, quite amazing. And Bill, did you know that I've actually got the soundtrack, the, the actual soundtrack of the film? And do you know what the beginning of me and Bill have gone off on one? Sorry, guys. Um, at the beginning of the film Gladiator, we, we've got that scene where you've got the cavalry and the, the, the fight at um, Marcus Aurelius's major battle on the uh, northern Germanic frontier. Remember that scene? Yeah. And you've got the beautiful music. Yeah. You can't get that anywhere on YouTube. It's, it, you can't get it on YouTube. And I am so lucky to be able to listen to that when I'm driving out. I've, I've got it on a CD and we actually bought that at Vindolanda because they were selling reduced CDs at Vindolanda and Michelle bought me one. I've got the, the full musical score on a CD, Carl. That's available. Um, the, 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 I'm wondering what I'd like to do is share this DVD with you and you see if that, because the version I've got on the CD is, I believe, um, the extended version out of the film so i'm not it's not it's not it's more than the film that's what i'm saying bill so so we will we'll, we'll we'll test that one out one day bill that that'd be rather interesting that would be rather interesting so what i'd like to do now is 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 my my dearie me time time's getting on um so we've got to 22 because i i was i was i was um well over 10 minutes yeah. late so so i i want to show i want to show you this coin right I want to show you this coin. I don't know if you can see that clearly. Can you, uh, can you, can you, can you, is that coming up? Mm, the reflection is, uh, or is that blue? Yeah, no, yeah. no. Ah, uh, 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 yeah, no, look at that. Doesn't that, that look we beautiful? Got it. No, we got yes. It, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So I've got that there. And if we turn it around, there we go. We've got the obverse. Uh, so in other words, if you're going to show coins, you've got to like get the, uh, if I put the, oh, look, that's even better. You fiddle around with the camera. Hang on, hang on. Let me fiddle. That look. See, there yeah. you go. You got that coin. Now, just show you the head again. And if you notice that this is actually the head. Hang on a minute. Let me try and get the angle again. Um, where are we? Hang on. Let's get that off. We we. It, the light's gone again. Oh bugger. But the head on there actually shows. Oh, that look at that. Yes, that's better. That that is actually enough, the yeah. head. That is actually the head of an empress. Friends, that's a wonderful image, isn't it? That is a wonderful image. Yeah. That is an that is an image of an empress. You can see the bun at the back of her head. You can yeah. see the writing. And I want to tell you the story about this coin, which I've never really told. Um, and and I, I'm going to do it now. So look yeah. at that there. I'm going to put that down. I have one last look. That's absolutely beautiful. Look at the nose. Look at the eyes. Look at the ears. Right. Yeah. And look, absolutely yeah. amazing, amazing that, yeah. amazing. And the reason why I'm talking over you uh, is because I want to keep this on there. And um, so mm. we've got that. And I'm going to what I'm going to do now. I'm going to tell you the story about that coin. Um, now my dad. This is this is actually given to me by my dad. It, the, this is this has actually been in this purse since 1971, right? And my dad used to keep her in his is uh, is in his underwear drawer, right? Um, and there's a wonderful story about this. Um, when he was when he was working in Jersey, right? Because um, he, he, my dad worked in Jersey, and um, Actually, no, uh, my, my dad was working in Jersey in ni 1969. Um, when, he, when he was working over there, um, he did a job for somebody. And somebody said, oh, actually, I can't pay you. Would you like payment? In which <laughs> my dad said, yeah, I'll have that coin. So the, the, the woman actually paid my dad this silver coin, right? Paid my dad this silver coin. Um, and then when he came back, he was living in Barry in a place called Collard Crescent. 
um, and he sent the coin to Exeter Museum. I don't know why he sent it to Exeter Museum. There's there's the original. There's this is how they used to write things down. There you go, Exeter Museum, right? And he says this is a silver coin called an Antoninus. So the Antoninus is basically um, a denarius, but it's an it's another name. Um, it's an Antoninus um of a harina etruscula um harina the etruscan in other words who was the wife of trajan decus now trajan decus was a roman emperor from 249 to 251 a.d and the reverse of the legend says um pudicia augustus uh, and the figure of Rudicia, a minor goddess. So in other words, we've got the representation of a minor goddess on the coin, which which is which is that. OK, which um, there you go. Can't get it again. But we've got that figure on it. And um, we've got the representation of Harina, um, Hatruskila, uh, which is um, who was the wife of Trajan Decus. Now, what I'm going to do now, this is where I go on to my book, actually. And for those of you who've got a copy of my book, because I, I know I know one of you haven't got a copy of my book, and I'm not going to mention Richard's name, um, <laughs> because I don't want to embarrass Richard for not having a copy of my book. Go on, embarrass him, Neil. Go on, you all know now anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right, so interesting enough, um, interesting enough, on, on, in my, this is actually the original copy of the book, it's got the Roman Emperor Trajan Decus, who's actually there. Okay, Trajan Decus. And yes, the dates are correct. Uh, but no coins of Trajan Decus have actually been found anywhere in South Wales. And actually, having a coin associated with an empress who was married with Trajan Decus is a very, very rare coin indeed. And, um, and, and basically, I, I always said... <laughs> I, I always said to my mum, if anything ever happens to my dad, I want that coin. And he gave it to me 10 years ago. So nothing will happen to my dad because I've already got the coin. You see, see my dad's logic. So, uh, yes. So it, it's been in, it's been in this little purse and um, it was in my dad's drawer. And, and out of everything that um, uh, belongs to my my family, that, that's definitely one that I always wanted. And I carry this around with me everywhere. Um, so. I wanted to share that with you today. I've never read that out before. And the next thing I wanted to do with you today is Rome at war. Um, now, we've all heard about the word decimation, haven't we? we are. Um, I don't want to embarrass anybody, yeah. but um, Bill, you're the you're the um, you're the one who might know what the word decimation means. Um, I do. I do. Tell me and I'm, I'm going to tell you if you're right or wrong. Just straight like that. Go on. OK. Legionaries, if uh, one of them dishonored the legion in any way, or did anything wrong, uh, 10 of them would be chosen at random, and one of them at random would be selected to be executed in front of the others to teach him a lesson, you know, not to bring dishonor to the leader. To be honest with you, if I was going to give Max for that, I'd give about nine out of 10, so that's good. Decimation was one, uh, well done, was, well, Des Desi really gives it anyway. Decimation was one of the most serious punishments that could be um, meted out in the Roman army. It involved the 10th man of each legion being condemned to death, with the execution being carried out by his peers, usually through a violent beating. Decimation was sometimes used as a punishment for legions that had desert, uh, deserted or fled a battlefield against orders. Polybus describes it thus. Now, Polybus is a, a Roman writer and he writes in his book, The Histories. He goes as follows. This is inflicted. The tribune takes a cudgel. We all know what a cudgel is. A, 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 um, and, and just touches the oh, condemned amazing. man with it. After which, all in the camp beat or stone him. In most cases, dispatching him in the camp itself. But even those who manage to escape are not saved thereby. For they are not allowed to return to their homes. So if you survived, 
and none of the family would dare to receive such a man in their house. So that those who have once fallen into this misfortune are utterly ruined. If the same thing happens to large bodies, and if entire um, groups of men desert their posts when exceedingly hard pressed, the officers refrain from inflicting the bastinado or the death penalty at all, but find the solution of the difficulty that is both salutary and terror striking. In other words, Bill, it's random, as you said. The, the tribute, the, the tribune assembles the legion. So the tribune, the, he's, he's the one in charge um, and brings up those guilty of leaving the ranks, reproaches them sharply. You should never have done this, Richard, with a big eagerly smile on his face. And finally chooses by lot, sometimes six, uh, sometimes I should start again, five, sometimes eight, sometimes 20 of the offenders. So adjusting the number thus chosen that they form as near as possibly the 10th part of those guilty of cowardice. So the number 10 again, decimation, dece, 10. Um, those on whom the lot falls are bastinadoed mercilessly, mercilessly in the manner above described. The rest receive rations of barley instead of wheat and are ordered to encamp outside the camp on an unprotected spot. So no defences around. As therefore the danger and dread of drawing the fatal lot affects all equally, as it is uncertain on whom it will fall. And as the public disgrace of receiving barley rations falls on all alike, the practice is that best calculated both to inspire fear and to correct the mis. Uh, the mischief. So in other words, um, they gather. So in other words, everybody um, is going to be affected by these people um, who have decided to shame the Legion. Um, and in other words, that would mean that nobody would try to desert. That's decimation. Um, and decimation is not the type of thing to do. So Richard, you are never allowed to leave my classes, because if you do, we will meet out the worst punishment to you. So we'll right, have to leave in a couple of minutes, mine, Carl. Right, you can't. Right, okay, we'll we'll go. We'll um we'll go um uh we'll finish we'll finish in about um. Are you okay till twenty two, and we'll finish then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What I'd like to say, obviously, this is the last of the ten. No, not the ten. The eight. The last of the eight. Um, Bill, we're up to date on this one, but we still got to work. Uh, yeah, it's been so busy. So this is the one um, that everyone was up to date on paying. So this is to renew as of um, today. So we've got a new eight. So if everyone wants to do a new another eight, um, then okay. then that's what we'll do. Right. So, so, the, so the new cycle starts next Wednesday, which is what the sixteenth. Yes. Everyone's clear with that. Okay, Carl. The new st cycle starts yeah. next week and it's 32 shekels. Yep. Okay. Or, or 30 pounds and two denarii. Or 24 Antonin Nayas. Come on, you tongue twisted with that one. Antonin yes. Antonin Nayas. Antonin Nayas. Antonin Nayas. Antonin Nayas. Oh, God. Antonin Nayas. Right. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Uh, or, or in other words, um, 32 follicles. Roger's just gone off on one. Right, okay. What I'd like to do is just, I want to do some slides today. So so none of you say I didn't do any slides, right? So um, shut up, Rog. Thanks. Um, now, we know all know where that is. That's the, that's the, that's the reconstruction of the temple. Um, Oh, am I showing this? No, I'm not. Okay, sorry, I'm not. Um, that is the reconstruction of the temple at wonderful Colchester, and that that itself, that 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 building itself, is 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 one of those buildings that um, you know, it ref which takes us back to. 
the, the glorification of Rome and, and Emperor Claudius and, and, and the Roman Empire and, and Roman Britain and all those other things that, that really, truly and greatly go bump in the night. So um, and that's believed to be the place that the head behind us um, actually um, was um, came from. So, you know, that that's where the head um, of uh, its belief Claudius was displayed. But now we think it's actually the head of Nero. So I just want to take us somewhere else today. Uh, this is actually um, a colored up image of the Roman mosaic to be found where? The Chia Mead Roman Villa at Lantwick Major. Now, all the images that I've seen actually show a, a black and white monochrome design because either the photographs were taken in the 1920s or they were taken in the 1970s when I know we had colour in the 1970s, obviously. Um, but this is actually the, the coloured mosaic at the Roman villa at Kair Mead, Kair Mead itself. Now, I wanted to sort of bring this to you to sort of give you a little few illustrations at the end today. And that's, that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, and there you go. This is this is one of the burials, and um, the, this was actually taken at the at the meeting place that uh, we used to have the classes in Lanswick Major. Carl, Carl, you forgot the temple. The image of the temple. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad somebody's told me that I was testing you. No, I wasn't. Yeah. Um, okay, okay. Look, look at that. Doesn't that look great? Oh yeah, good. I, I, you know, what is it about you people? You, you, it's almost as if 10 minutes later you tell me that I'm not even showing you the slide I'm talking about. Hi, Mark, and I'm Carl. Right, all right, Richard. I'm, I'll, see, I'll see you on Friday, Richard. Yeah, man. Oh, you bastard. You didn't even say goodbye properly. Oh, never mind. He did. <laughs> um, any, anyway, I'll, I'll see him on Friday. So, uh, the, again, look at the colour there. Now, this is actually... Uh, a coloured inversion from the from 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 what we know, and this is actually still in the ground at the site of Kyamid, just out just out north in Lantwick Major. Um, and what we do find is look at that image. That is actually one of the bodies that was actually found at the Roman villa at Lantwick Major. Now that is a really nice image, and you don't often see this because the bodies were then all lifted out of the ground. This was actually found buried. Um, they, they actually, they actually. In, I'll just tell tell you a little bit of stuff because you know we, we haven't got a lot of time. So, so the Roman villa at Lantwick Major, you've got this great mosaic in the in the in the main building. It's quite a small building, and what we then find is that there was some event, and we find over thirty sets of human remains scattered on this floor. And guess what? They're all people who've been beheaded. 33 of them actually, all, be, all bodies found beheaded, scattered on top of this mosaic floor. And we think, oh my God, those are the people that actually lived in the Roman villa. But we, now we found through DNA that they, they were people who were raiding in the area and they were all captured and they were all executed within this building. And then what we then find is that um, whilst they, when they found these bodies, they actually found cuts into the mosaic and around the rest of the site. And there were actually bodies of these people. Now these people, were actually buried with with heads and and these are actually these have got a, these have got a local DNA group so these are the people who were buried at the villa uh, at the villa who who uh, actually once lived there so obviously as as uh, people deserted the villa and moved elsewhere in the Roman period they actually buried their loved ones there because the villa still meant something other bits of the villa were still used but the villa still meant something. So that, that's that's an image of one of those buried. There, there, there were five, I think, six um, individuals buried that, that were uh, associated with the villa. Carl, Carl, can I ask a question about that skeleton? Go for it. Um, it's, it's not straight. The configuration of the legs in the kitchen it may have been buried on the side. And as the flesh rotted, the upper half and the edge just flopped over on his back. You, you, you go along with that. It's unusual to sort of see that configuration, isn't you it? You do. You do. You do actually, in a in in a way, Bill. What you do, what you do see. I, I I'm actually going to go half with you, Bill. The head is actually resting on a stone, because that's a stone there. So the head's resting on a stone, but the face is looking upwards, because that's the lower mandible. I know this is a bad image, 
uh, that's a lower mandible. And then you've got the rest of the skeleton, and that's nice, nicely cropped. But are you were right, Bill, that the legs are like on the side, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're like nice, nicely placed on the side. If, if, if I was doing a class, I would have gone on a table and sort of demonstrated this. Yeah, but and, and I'm no, I, I'm not going to. I think that it's lying like that. But you are right with the legs on the side, Bill. You are very right. The legs have been placed on the side, which is a very unusual way to be to be buried. Actually, Bill, you you are yeah, very right. Yeah. Very unusual way. Yeah. But it's maybe because that it was you know they needed to do that because. Um, you know, after rigor mortis and, and all that's gone away, the, the sort of body sort of goes limp again, doesn't it? So um, well, that, that's the point. It could have been buried, buried uh, long after death, in which case rigor mortis would have set in in that configuration. If they died in that configuration, just plop, plop in, in the grave like that, maybe. But doesn't rigor, doesn't the effects of rigor, rigor mortis die out? Oh, no, I don't know. Do they? Yeah, I think it does actually. Right, okay. I, I, I think you get, yeah. I think you've got the stage of rigor mortis and then, then your body goes limp again. I think. Mm. I think that's right, because when when people are preparing the bodies, you, you yeah, I think that's right, Bill. Um, the effects. So so that could be a point as rigor mor before rigor mortis have died. That's a good point, Bill. Before the rigor mortis, the effects of rigor mortis have died out, are gone, then they 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 buried the body, um, not so long after the person died. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, what what you do find, you find that. Um, these are actually these are actually some of the wonderful bits of Roman masonry that were found on the at the site, and that there is a roof finial. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? That that was a roof finial. So that roof finial, when 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 the roof collapsed, um, somehow the roof finial was intact, or it was already on the ground. It had been taken off the roof. Maybe the roof had been um, taken apart, and the, the roof finial was left there or something. What we do know is that there were a lot more of these 50 years before John Story excavated the site because the local farmer said to have gone to the site and taken lots of material to build this farmhouse 50 years before the site was found in 1886. And that, again, you can see these patches here. These are where the bodies have been found. But you can see see the wonderful galosh pattern around the outside. And that is naturally that wonderful star there. That It's a wonderful arrangement. Um, and again dating of this site is always being updated um and there, there's there's you can see all the rooms there all, all the good that, that's the hypercore system um and this these these are actually images from the 1800s this is one of the images from the 1800s you can you can clearly see uh, all that arrangement the hypercore system and what the archaeologists did back then, they usually followed walls and they excavated wall areas, um, and then and and then occasionally inside the rooms. So there's bits of the Roman villa that haven't been excavated there. Um, and just sort of closing in, that's that over there is nothing to do with the villa. It's fairly modern, but this here is the outline of the villa. So just 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 quickly, we'll, we'll finish in a few moments. That there is the area of the mosaic. Um, this area. Um, and you've got a hall like building, you've got, um, I'll just sort of, I'll tell you what, I'll just quickly draw this in there quickly. It will only take me a few, it'll only take me a moment. Uh, so you've got um, this this line across here and you've got this here and you've got another building up there and you've got a building like this and it goes like this um, and that goes all the way up there um, and you've got an arrangement of building. If you notice it's all sort of a bit of an angle and that sort of comes back down there that comes out there we we're not really sure what's going on there and that sort of comes in there and there um and hang on that that's slightly out of skew there that's all six to start throw a six yeah that's good um and that that sort of goes in there um and we got the buildings coming in sort of like that and we've got some later buildings like that so that's basically the arrangement of the villa and it's sort of two courtyard well one sort of courtyard and another courtyard so so sort of the basic arrangement of the site um and we do believe and, and around the outside we, and we do believe that there, there are banks and ditches as well so we finally move on and show you just one more image i do believe and another image of the mosaics again mosaic pavement 
and it was actually and some of it was re-uncovered in in 1971 um that is the mosaic in 1888 great isn't it photographs from 1888 um and that itself this is the last image today um there was excavations there in the problem is with the excavations in 1938 they were left open because of the war and then cattle were allowed on the site and that caused damage and then they re-excavated there in 1971 something else happened and then um bits of the building are still there and really being badly decayed so that's the roman vera landscape major we, should, we could come back to that at a later date are there any questions today yeah, Carl, um, after your orig original excavation, I'm assuming you would have put some sort of wet waterproof membrane over the mosaic before they backfill, presumably. No evidence of that. No. Is there a book on the Carimene mean, Villa? I'm, I'm not aware of anything. Any written document about it? it must there, be the, yeah, there, there, there's, there is... Um, the local history society has got a guy in it who's, who's actually done some recent work on it. And um, there, there, is, there is stuff out there published, but I'm... I'm not exactly sure there's actually a specific book on the Roman villa. It's crying out for one, isn't it? You think about it. It definitely is. It's crying out for yeah. somebody to actually buy it and turn it into a tourist yeah. attraction. But um, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's an amazing site. It's an amazing site. Um, yeah. yeah. Right. So um, anything from you, Rog? Good to see you, Rog. No, oh, that's very interesting. Cal said he was at the government meeting, so we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So. Um, so Roger, I, I will um yes, so Roger, you continue you're gonna be doing this next week as well. Yes, I'll carry on and send us a check for thirty-two. Oh good. Send us a check for thirty-two pounds and Bill's gotta pay thirty-eight and, and four shekels. <laughs> so uh, are you continuing with this, Bill? Yes, I'll uh I'll bang you a check down the line. It's good, it's opening up all sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it does. And Especially finally the leaders. We've got to keep going, haven't we, Rog? Um, Pat, any, any uh, anything yeah, you would like to say, darling, before we finish? <coughs> no, no, I'll, I'll sign up again. Good, good, good. And uh, Pat, I haven't got anything to say yeah. this week. Yeah. And again, sorry for the delay this week. Um, it's just um, I, I'm having these these yeah. weird things again. And um, it was very strange last night. I was just not. I was completely out of it. And then then I got into it because of the subject subject matter. I think it's okay. And it, it sort of went off okay yeah. last night. So um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, yeah. what I'm going to do, I'm going to call it a day today. Thank you for joining us. And um, and I will see you tomorrow, um, Roger. Roger, did you say you're joining us tomorrow as well? No, no, I'll see you next Tuesday. No? Okay, I'll see you next Tuesday. Okay, Roger. All right, then. Well, tomorrow's a repeat, isn't it? It's Tuesday. Yeah, to, to, to more, yeah, but Roger, Roger, I, you could always do it with a bit more of me, you know. Yeah. I've got to put up with you for a whole week next okay. year on the um, excavation in West Wales. That's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. They haven't given me the site the directions yet. The yeah, station. but Roger, it's a long way to go. And Roger, what we're going to do, we're going to, you know, in the goat pen, right? There's a little area we want excavated in the goat pen. And and as you kneel over, the, the, the goats are going to, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well. They're, yeah. they're gonna they're gonna get their horns and they're gonna go Poof, and you go over the hedge and you go. Oh, is this a goat farm or is it an excavation? Oh yeah. no, but Roger's gonna do a the goat, goat area and the rest of you can do the excavation. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I can see Roger being chased around the field by the billy goats. I can see it now. It'll be great fun. Uh, okay then. Okay well, then, guys. And, and, and Roger, you can you can milk you can milk the goats as well. Okay then. So all right then, what I'm going to do, I'm going to call that a day, and I will I will I will um, see two of you tomorrow, and I'll see you next Tuesday. If there's no other questions, take care. See you soon. Thanks, Carl. Thanks. Take care, Bill, you. Pat, That's and well, Roger. And... I'm away with the missus. <laughs> oh, I know you're always away with the missus, Roger. Roger. <laughs> Hello. We'll after next, we'll be way up north, good luck. All right then. Cheers, Bill. Well, see, what, see, what's see, uh, see what's happening at that near Scarborough, that east, was it? east field or something. Ah, uh, right, more We're stuff being excavated. Oh, good, good. See Scarborough what, Fair. Got to have a look around there to see if there's anything to see anyway. Yeah, well, Roger, don't, don't, don't do okay, anything no. I wouldn't do. Oh, oh. Roger, always take oh. precautions.
That's right. Oh, oh, Roger, be Again, a good boy. Be, be a good boy, Roger. Anyway, right. Rog, I'll, I'll see you on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, okay, go. Thanks again. Cheers, Take dude. care, babes. Take care. See you, Rog. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. Oh, God, oh, that was nearly disastrous, that was today. But it was good, wasn't it? Whoever's watching, it was nearly disastrous because I, oh, God, long-term COVID. So i actually going to put that on there, and that'd be good. Thank you very much for watching um, on the spot. <laughs>